Del Tom, Kayleen Carl, also the honorary coaches here today. And we are ready for basketball. Game number three of the season for Baylor. They're 2-0. Game number two of the season for Arizona State. They are 1-0. Melissa Barlow, Brenda Panjoja, and Cheryl Flores, our officiating crew, and Baylor in the road black. We'll have the first possession. D.D. Richards to Lauren Cox. Of course, Kalani Brown and Cox, the one-two punch on the inside. No roll and an early rebound for Kiana Ibis. Leading score a year ago for this Arizona State team. Well, that's a solid first defensive possession for Arizona State. Rebecca talked about it in the open. The challenge is handling the size, particularly on the offensive glass of the Baylor Lady Bears. Robbie Ryan. Charnay Johnson Chapman. Now back out to Riley Richardson with six to shoot. Feed inside. Nice little move to get inside of Cox, but it just won't go down for Ibis. Nice move, though, by Ibis, and on the first possession, and you see right here as well, Arizona State will front the post. They will do a full front from their post player. It can be frustrating. Already a foul on Kalani Brown. Oh, you have to be physical with Kalani, and she's one of the best players in the country, and her size is a part of it because it's a challenge to move her off her spot once she gets there, but the other part of it is skill. I mean, she's a skilled post player that can make you pay. Little too strong off the jumper by Robbie Ryan, and here comes Juicy Landro. Juicy knows how to push the basketball, but can't hold on to it. So the second turnover for Baylor. Courtney Eckmark into the front court. If Arizona State's going to pull the upset, what has to happen for them here today? Well, I think the key for Arizona State is movement. One of the things that Baylor does a good job of defensively is, is forcing you to stand and, and allowing them to, to stagnate your offense with their length and their size. So the key for Arizona State is movement. Movement is a good thing for them on the offensive end. And it also helps to make 6'7 Kalani Brown defend out on the perimeter. Evolve her in pick and rolls, try to get her to switch. And as you said, push the pace. And if Arizona State, Charlie Turner Thorne likes the way her team can shoot the three ball this year. If they can get some threes to go, especially early in transition, it will bode, bode well for them. Charlie Turner Thorne also telling us before the game she's going to use that bench quite a bit, battling with some injuries, some players not yet at full health and fitness, so already two early substitutions. Freshman Taya Hansen out of Canada and the senior Sophia Lenga from France. And a rebound for D.D. Richards. Here's one of the key players for Baylor this year, Chloe Jackson, transfer from LSU, the graduate transfer, taking over at the point for Baylor. Battle for the loose ball, and a jump ball will give the possession to Arizona State. Baylor loves the high-low from one post player to the other, but because of the way Arizona State plays defense, you have to be careful with that pass, perhaps make a pass fake first because they are going to fight to get around in front. Yeah, when, when you are at the size disadvantage, and I know this because I spent my entire <laughs> career at a size disadvantage, okay? So you have to anticipate, and you have to utilize what your strength is, which is your quickness. And that's what Arizona State's posts have done here pretty well defensively, is, they, is they've utilized their quickness on the defensive end. Turn around by Jamie Rudin into the game along with Kiera Russell. Jackson and a foul called on Russell. I should have introduced you as the size disadvantage yes. expert. I didn't know that was part of the long list on your resume. I'm size disadvantage. She's size advantage. That's pretty much how we roll. Definitely yes. uh, advantage Lobo. Advantage Lobo. Comes <laughs> to the size. Yes. Yes. How, about, how about the quickness, Kara? Should I give you the nod there? I, I, yes, but okay. it's it's not um, uh, it's a wide it margin. It's relative to me. <laughs> it's relative to you, yes. Yes. <laughs> But I would get the check. Yeah, I would get the check on that. So Kalani Brown heads to the bench. Queen Egbo, one of the fierce five, the five-member freshman class for Baylor, comes in, and here comes some Baylor pressure. Hanson, game's first field goal goes to the freshman at 14 points in the opener against Incarnate Word. All three pointers, four threes. Defense! 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 
Good hands out top by Alenga. Alenga tried to work on Lauren Cox, and Cox is called for the foul. And we've talked about the pressure that Arizona State is putting on the post players and the deny, but they put a tremendous amount of pressure on the perimeter players as well. Whether it's a guard or a post, they're going to deny everything. That's their point of pressure, their point of attack. Alenga at the free throw line. Six points, nine rebounds in the season opener for Arizona State. That was an 81-43 win in Tempe. Kalani Brown back into the game as Egbo will go to the bench. D.D. Richards the rebound. Good pass. Cox to Brown. On the season now, Lauren Cox in three games has 10 assists and zero turnovers. She is a terrific passer from the post position. Alenga can't get to three to go and Cox has the rebound. There's her turnover. <laughs> yeah, you saw that coming once Rebecca said that. And, and Kim Mulkey had said that Cox's ability to throw the outlet pass reminds her of what Bill Walton could do. That was not one of her better outlet passes, getting the turnover, but she makes up for it on the defensive end, getting the block out on the perimeter. Well, you can feel that both teams are still trying to get the rhythm of the game. I mean, this is the first big matchup of the season for both teams. And remember, both teams have some young players in the rotation, some freshmen that are going to be asked to play big roles. So while they do have veterans with experience, you are trying to integrate. These are their freshmen's first big game of their career. Ekmar, good fake to get free. It's a two, a deep two for the good shooter, Courtney Ekmar. Four minutes in here in Fort Defiance. And another turnover for Baylor. That's turnover number six already for the Lady Bears. Step back three from Ekmark. That's a tough shot. That's a heck of a shot. That's one of the things that Charlie Turner Thorne loves about this year's version of the Sun Devils is that they have players that can knock down the three-point shot. Ekmark led the team and made threes a season ago. One and done for Baylor. Now Arizona State wants to run. Ekmark will try again. Cox with the rebound. That's her third board. Get it inside to Cox again. That was tipped out by Alenga. Well, Arizona State getting five points from Courtney Eckmark to take an 8-4 lead. More than just basketball here for the Sun Devils on their trip to the reservation. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Daisy Sour Cream. Only a dollop of Daisy will do. This has been such an honor to be a part of this incredible event and just honor our Native American communities, celebrate Res Ball and celebrate our troops. Veterans Day across our country speaks for itself and uh, what better uh, way to acknowledge our veterans and also acknowledge the Navajo Reservation than to be playing at their reservation. We're at Fort Defiance, about two and a half hours from Albuquerque, the largest Indian tribe, the Navajo Nation, covers a large area. The highest point is 10,346 feet. We're at about 6,800 feet, so no excuses of anybody's, you know, claiming to be a little winded here. Holly's the one doing all the work here, pretty game <laughs> running around. And over 156,000 residents on the res. Showdown on the res, good start for Arizona State. Baylor, a little trouble taking care of the basketball in the early going. Seven turnovers and just one field goal in their first 11 possessions. Eckmark. 
crowd like that one. <laughs> Shot clock winding down, and Kalani Brown gets whistled for her second personal. And this is where Kalani Brown is going to be challenged on the defensive end of the floor is when she's out on the perimeter at 6-7, especially in that circumstance, switching out on a guard. Perimeter defense is not the friend of the post player. And you got to keep your hands off. And this is, a, this is a blow to Baylor. I mean, this is Baylor's best player having to come out with 433 left in the first quarter. And this is a Baylor team that lost a lot of players off of last year's roster. I mean, they, they lost some key contributors. So we see Arizona State score again. And the challenge for Kim Mulkey is going to be the point guard position this season. That is going to be the real challenge. And I, I think we're seeing some of the frustration, at least here early on, with the turnovers, Rebecca. You know, Chloe Jackson getting the role of point guard, starting point guard. And I was talking to her before the game. So the last time she played point was in high school. She is a natural two guard and learning, and they're happy with her progress at the one. But do you know, Kara, it's one of the most difficult transitions or a more difficult transition you can make. Especially because she's learning a new system as well. Yes. Right? To transfer from LSU. So not only is she learning a new position, she's also at a new school as well. And when Kim Mulkey is your head coach who played at a pretty high level, she expects a little bit more out of the point guard position, and she has said that a time or two. She expects Juicy Landrum to contribute at the one as well, and this is what they lost. Christy Wallace, her season cut short by injury last year. She was at the one. Alexis Morris dismissed from the team. She really emerged at the end of last year as a point guard. So enter Chloe Jackson trying to move over to that point guard spot it's going to take time and y you can win a national championship without a true point guard we saw Notre Dame do it a year ago okay but they had growing pains in the middle of the season last year of dealing with not having a point guard and so I expect Baylor to have some growing pains while their players figure out and kind of play their way into the position saw that put back by Nalissa Smith I have loved watching her play so far in this young season a great athlete a freshman at the post position She's just one of those players your eyes are drawn to on the offensive end. First points for the freshman from Converse, Texas, who scored 21 and pulled down 10 boards in the win against St. Francis out of Pennsylvania last time out. Now hit the top, and it'll be Baylor basketball. Yeah, I think Smith is one of those players that we're going to see her minutes go up and up and up. Now, granted, she's playing behind two wonderful players in Brown and Cox, but she is somebody that gains you extra possessions. She's somebody that rebounds the heck out of the ball. She's going to be a terrific player in the Baylor uniform. D.D. Richards drives on that mark. Won't go. Cox kept it alive, but controlled by Ibis. And Moon Urson picks up the foul as Ekmart started to dribble. So one of the things to watch uh, as Arizona State has gotten out to this early lead, and one of the things when you're playing Baylor that you have to do, we've talked about their rebounding prowess, you have to limit them to one shot. And so Baylor only has one offensive rebound so far in this game. And so that's that's advantage Arizona State, and that gives you a chance. That gives you a chance to compete with this team if you're not giving them two shots every time down. An offensive rebound for the Sun Devils. That's their third offensive rebound, and it turns into a three-pointer. Seven-point lead, two minutes to go, first quarter. Foul on Ibis. So Jamie Loetta, the freshman out of Washington State, Moses Lake High School, not expecting to see a lot of her today. She's been limited in practice this week due to illness. But jumps into the game, and you know, we see a lot of these Arizona State players coming and going, and that was one of the keys for Charlie Turner Thorne, trying to keep players fresh out here. on Baylor and Queen Eggbo gets called yeah she rolled she rolled under and you know that's something that you can't do ESPN basketball love story our unprecedented 20-hour film that consists of more than 60 interconnected short stories continues Tuesday with the final two episodes starting 8 o'clock Eastern all episodes 
are also streaming live on the ESPN app. What a offensive rebound. board for wow. Arizona State again. They're coming up with the offensive boards. Baylor is not. Hanson. Loetta. Nice little feed, but unable to finish. Was Johnson Chapman. One minute to go in the first, seven point lead for the Sun Devils. Good job on the glass by Smith, the freshman with four in the first quarter. So active and so bouncy inside the paint. Deep three, Loetta. This is her collegiate debut here today on the reservation. Did not play against Incarnate Word because of illness, but she's come off the bench to help Arizona State to an eight-point lead. Urson was foul. Well, Arizona State has done exactly what they needed to do to, to get off to a good start. And if they're able to replicate this quarter, it's exactly what they need to do to be able to win this game. They've got to hit threes. You talked about that, Rebecca. They've got to limit Baylor on the glass. They've done that. Kalani Brown's out with two fouls. I think Charlie Turner, Turner Thorne has to be really pleased with how her team has played to this point in the game. Especially defensively, how they've made Baylor look uncomfortable, whether it's in their pick and roll or even in their high-low. Baylor has not looked comfortable on the offensive end of the floor. And this is a team that in their first two games has averaged 108 points a game. Yeah. Scoring 116 Thursday in Waco. One thing Kim Mulkey said after that game, her biggest concern after two games is free throws. They want to be among the best. A couple of misses there for Moon Urson. Shot clock off. Chance for a final shot here for the Sun Devils. Ryan on the drive. The kick outside. And one more three for Arizona State. Could not ask for a better quarter for Arizona State playing here on the Navajo Reservation. A double-digit lead over fourth-ranked Baylor at the end of one. Three-point highly approved by us here. Thanks, we, man. We, you know, Rebecca and I thought we dressed nice for this game here today. <laughs> I, I think you hey. win with this outfit. Shout out to all the Marines out there. Semper Fi, hoorah. Um, obviously, my dad was in the Marines. And um, growing up, we had a Marines bumper sticker on our mailbox. And no other mailbox in the neighborhood had a bumper sticker on it. So one day I said to my dad, Dad, why do we have a Marines bumper sticker on the mailbox? And he says, well, so no one's going to break in our house. If we're <laughs> the and I go, Dad, I don't think that works. He goes, well, has anyone ever broken in our house? I said, no. He said, well, there you go. <laughs> so, hey, Marine bumper stickers on the better than ADT, guys. I like the philosophy, yeah. Mr. Lawson. Yes. <laughs> Down to 10 on the shot clock as Richards on the drive. Good save on the baseline. And Baylor gets a fresh shot clock. Lauren Cox from outside. Richardson the rebound. Eight points, eight turnovers in that first quarter for Baylor. Kalani Brown picked up her second personal foul with 4.33 to go in the quarter. And Arizona's been launching threes. Charlie Turner Thorne said, you know, we got to play a little res ball, which means get some shots up quickly, take some threes, move the basketball, and that's worked a little bit for him. I won't drop down for Ibis. Well, you talked about what Charlie Turner Thorne was asking.
asking of her team today and wanting to play that free-flowing style, but she had a little something else in mind. When the Arizona State team came out of the locker room today, all of the back of their warm-up shirts had a Native American word. It's a Navajo word for try harder, be resilient, have intensity and energy, and I believe that they are really buying into the spirit of that word because we have seen extra effort, particularly on the offensive rebounds. That was something they had their mindset to play to honor that spirit on their backs. Thank you, Holly. Good play by Smith. She's made a difference on both ends of the floor so far for Baylor. Down by 11. Now four subs coming in and Queen Egbo coming in as well. There's that word on the back. You know, Rebecca and I, we were practicing all morning. Yaute. Rebecca, did I get it? Yaute. Yeah. Yeah, Hello, welcome. Yaute. Yeah, okay. Yaute. Yeah, and that's as close as I can get. <laughs> You're closer than I got. That's not what the back of the shirt was saying. No, 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 no. That's that's. We're just trying to expand our Navajo gotcha. vocabulary. That's hello, right? Yes. Navajo? Yep. Well, I don't know what we were saying. No. Right. <laughs> we were trying to say hello. <laughs> we were trying to say hello. That's right. Five on the shot clock again. Knocked away on the inside. No reset. Eggbo. Rebound by Johnson Chapman. The difficulty the Baylor post players are having getting a touch in the paint and Arizona State's able to go to the other end and get some touches in the paint for their post players. That is not at all what we expected coming into this game. Freshman gets the roll. First points for Queen Egbo, 6-3 out of Houston. So that's what Baylor needs to do offensively to me is just simple. Come down, pass it to the wing, pass it to the block. They're having a hard time with their location and the timing of their passes. They're actually having a hard time guarding Arizona State from beyond the arc as well. But when you don't have a true point guard that understands when and how and where the ball needs, all those things, you've got to keep it simple. Post up on the block, give it to the big, to the big players, and, and let them operate. And also the difficulties for young posts and young guards in running the pick and roll and knowing how for the bigs to set the screen in the right place and how to how to roll or pop out of it. I'm with you, Kara. Get your butt on the block and we'll get you know, it to you inside. And get it to you. And get it to him. Don't throw it to the other team. Get it to him. Arizona State has made five three-pointers and Ekmark has a chance for six. Smith with the rebound. In transition for two. That's Richards. There was a lot of that in Baylor's first two games of the season. Getting the defensive board and just pushing the other way in transition. That three is long, but knocked out of bounds by Baylor. Well, right now, Baylor's trying to figure out life without Lauren Cox and Kalani Brown. They're both at the end of the bench right now while Kim Mulkey throws out different combinations to try to answer back in this game. Well, you, you look at those two and, and the power that they bring, but you can reduce their power as an opponent if you don't let them have the basketball. And that's what Arizona State's done a good job of. Caitlin Bickle, another one of the freshmen for Baylor into the game, number 51. Chloe Jackson back as well. Travel. So on that possession, Eggbo comes out to set the wing pick and roll. Jackson goes away from it. So now your post player is just floating on the perimeter for the possession. That's turnover number nine for Baylor. Arizona State with just one turnover so far. That's the solemn life of the post player, Kara Lawson. You rely completely on your guards to get to the basketball. Malenga follows her miss, gets on the floor, and rolled on the floor. They're going to call a jump ball. Possession arrow for Arizona State. Were you trying to blame Kara? Yes, she was. Guard for much. any of your deficiencies? Yeah. That, no, no, not her. We never played. But, she, but she oh, I know that, me. but you guys are teammates yeah, now. Yeah, so, so like she blames me for all the bad guards out there, and I blame her for all the bad posts out there. But I also, much I'll also give you credit for all the good guards. Yeah, and I gave you credit for the good posts. Okay. Yes. 
So it's just kind of a thing, you know. It's, it's a thing. Kind of a thing we have going back and forth. <laughs> well, I've heard it. I've, yes. I've enjoyed it yes. from afar. It's good to be sitting here next to you and see that is a real thing and not some made-up thing. Yes. By the second half, you'll be sitting in between us. <laughs> Turn around and Arizona State has gone cold here. Still lead by 12. As Chloe Jackson brings it into the front court. Lawrence, Lauren Cox back into the game. Honestly, Scott Grayson tries it and can't hit. And it'll be Sun Devils basketball. We'll step aside here in Fort Defiance with 4.33 to go in the first half. 12-point lead for the Sun Devils. You must be found. This is the moment you've truly all been waiting for. Well, during World War I and World War II, hundreds of Native Americans joined the armed forces, developed secret battle communications based on their own tribal language, known as the Code Talkers. The American warriors significantly aided the victories of the United States and its allies. Navajo Code is the only unbroken code in modern military history. It dates back 100 years. This is the 100th anniversary of Armistice Day ending World War I. Coming up on the E-Trade Halftime Report, we'll have a special look at the history of Native Americans in our military and a tribute to the veterans in attendance today. And quite a few veterans are in attendance today. Special section back behind us as we take a look at what's gone right for Arizona State here in the first half. Courtney Eckmark, eight points, five three-pointers. And Baylor, with the nine turnovers, just one turnover for Arizona State. So taking good care of the basketball, and that's helped them to a 12-point lead. Taking care of the basketball and shooting well has also allowed them to set up their defense. You know, they haven't been up, given up much in transition, and we've seen when they get set defensively how difficult it can be to score on them. Ibis with a good little fake to get free. Arizona State had missed five straight field goals before Kiana Ibis knocked it down, averaged 13 points a game. Last year, tops on the team, all Pac-12 honors, started every game a season ago. Cox, tough take for two. There it is, right? Just simple. Simple attack and use your length. And you're going to have to run Arizona State off that three-point line. We showed you how well they've shot from beyond the arc here in, that, in this first half. A little bit more aggressive for Baylor on the perimeter. Funnel those players on the drive to your, to your length inside. First points for Lauren Cox. Kalani Brown with two points. She's been sitting on the bench since four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Jackson can't hit the jumper. In transition, a wide open look on the kickback and another rebound for Smith. That's her sixth rebound already in the first half. Trinity Oliver, redshirt freshman, is into the game for Baylor, number three. And now Smith rises up and knocks it down. She's made an impact. You know, she, she's been really calm, fearless so far in this game when her team has needed her. On that trip back down the floor, she was the one clapping up her teammates, making a little noise. Sometimes it takes a little while for a freshman to get vocal, but she's been doing it on the floor, now trying to lead as well, and now back the other way. Tough one for Bickle the handle, but a great finish. Bickle feeding it to Smith and a timeout call by Arizona State. The fierce five, two of them representing Baylor well. And a little run here for the Lady Bears, down eight. Six nothing run for Baylor, great finish here. Getting out and running, it, it was. Way to run that down. And the athletic play by Smith, who's been the star of the first half for Baylor. And you talked about that, the emotion that she's bringing. And this is the first time we've gotten to see her in action against a, a ranked team. And she's passing every test so far. The preseason Big 12 co-freshman of the year. Charlie Collier from Texas also honored. Eckmark trying to drive.
Five to shoot. Ripped down by who else but Smith. Everybody watching Jackson a little bit, and Jackson, <laughs> people just kind of standing around. Jackson, who knows how to score, we saw that at LSU, knocks down the jumper, four for her. Eight straight points for Baylor, but that run ends with that three-pointer from Richardson, her second tray. What about the statement threes that Richardson has made at the end of the quarter, and then to stem this Baylor run? She's she's a point guard. She's somebody that understands the time and the score, and she's done a good job of managing that. Bickle. Freshman from Cave Creek, Arizona. So she has cheering section here. Back behind that Baylor bench, she gets her first points. Just north of Phoenix Tempe area, about four and a half hours from here in Fort Defiance. Ibis, well, Cox came out on the perimeter, but Ken Ibis still knocked down the three. Seven three-pointers for the Sun Devils. 12 assists on 12 field goals in the first half. Smith into double figures with 10. Just keep passing it to her. <laughs> I am so enjoying watching her play in person. She is something. I think that caught the window, but when you're hot, you're hot. Jamie Loetta, three three-pointers. Fierce, she said, also one and done. She wants that good offensive rebounding to continue that they had in the first half. Thank you, Holly. Bench scoring. 14 points for Baylor came from the bench. 10 from the starters. And they will start Melissa Smith here in the second half. So Kim Mulkey rewarding her freshman, who was the best player on the court for Baylor in that first half. They worked on this big lineup a little bit in their shoot around this morning. So it'll be interesting to see what Smith can do out on the perimeter. Cox mismatch on Courtney Eckmark backs it in. Oh, that's what happens when you have a 3 4 5 with that size, right? Someone on Arizona State's perimeter is going to have the responsibility of, of guarding a Baylor post player, and Lauren Cox takes advantage. Riley Richardson, seven to shoot. Drives on Jackson, lost the handle. Four to shoot for Arizona State. And with two on the shot clock, Ibis is fouled, taking a jumper. And that's the reaction you'll get whenever you foul a jump shooter with two on the shot clock. So Ibis to the free throw line. Tuesday on ESPN will have the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 ranking, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Reese and the crew will break it down from top to bottom, have coaches' reactions as well as a live interview with committee chairman Rob Mullins. You can always watch live on the ESPN app wherever you are. Rebound for Charday Johnson Chapman. Eckmark passes up the three-point attempt. Deflected from behind by Kalani Brown, but Arizona State still with it. So here's where Arizona State has been good. Whenever they've had an unsettling stretch in an offensive possession, Richardson has settled them down and gotten them a quality look. Jackson with the rebound. This end of the floor, just figure out you know, which smaller guard is defending a big and go right there. Trying to get Kalani Brown involved, and Johnson Chapman picks up the personal. First 
first substitution for the Sun Devils will be Taya Hansen, who scored two in the first half. No one in double figures so far for Arizona State. Smith into double figures with 10 for Baylor in the first half. And a foul called on Arizona State. You know, the thing about Baylor's size, so a lot of times we talk about this with teams with pace. And we say, hey, the pace wears on you, right, up and down through the course of the game. Baylor's size wears on you. And while they didn't start the game in their normal fashion, over the course of the 40 minutes, it's going to get harder and harder for Arizona State to try and keep these players from their spots. And we're seeing it here in the early, early in the second half when they're purposeful with where they want to go. I'm not sure they're at Arizona State could stop them. Six points now for Lauren Cox. Much better at taking away the three-point shot on the perimeter for Baylor. You see Landrum out deep on Eckmark and a deeper three, that time from Riley Richardson, and it will be Baylor basketball. And to continue with your point, Kara, there's nothing more fatiguing for a post player than banging with a bigger, stronger player in the post. It's not running up and down. It's not sprinting end to end. It's that constant physical contact, trying to get around, trying to prevent them from getting their spot that takes more energy out of you than anything else. Iris Imbolito, freshman from Spain, into the game as Kalani Brown scores. That time, Juicy Landrum brought the, brought the ball up the floor for Baylor. And a perfect pass into Brown. And a foul called on Smith. Kalani Brown at 6'7 is going to get the spot on the block, and the post player tries to get around and deny. you got to get it right over the defender, into the paws of your post player, and she delivers it beautifully. That pass was a turnover in the first half. That pass by the Baylor guards in the first half was thrown too low or it was thrown off target. And Juicy Landrum in that play makes the right pass. And so that was the fix. I'm sure that's what Kim Mulkey talked about with her players at halftime. The fix was settling down and making on-target passes. It's simple to say, but it's hard to do when you're feeling that pressure. If Baylor can do that, then they're going to get a lot of layups. Nine turnovers in the first half for Baylor. They have not turned the ball over yet here in the second half as Alenga hits. Bodies on the floor, ball still free, and a timeout is called by Baylor and granted as Juicy Landrum was scrambling for the loose ball. Eight-point game here, showdown on the res in Fort Defiance. Basketball is brought to you by McDonald's. Arizona State team taking in Window Rock here on the Navajo Reservation. The ASU Office of American Indian Initiatives very involved with this event. Kara mentioned before, ASU has the largest Native American student body in the country, so there's been a longtime connection here for ASU and for their head coach, Charlie Turner Thorne. Here's Holly with more. Well, Charlie Turner Thorne has had a number of players play for her that are Native Americans, but she actually had one of them that is a guest coach today ask if she would wear the celebratory traditional Native American dress. So Charlie's in a very special outfit today put together for her by Dr. Michelle Tom. She's got the jewelry of one of her former players, Charmaine Yazzie's grandmother, and it is the traditional turquoise jewelry with the squash blossom emblem that is representative of indigenous women so she wanted to really honor her former players they asked her to do it and she wanted to be um, very supportive of them in her dress today yeah, her honorary coaches wanted to do what they could to help her out find any edge possible and if it comes down to clothing so be it jewelry accessories whatever helps against fourth ranked baylor this Tough to stop Kalani Brown, who scored out of that timeout, and now Baylor back again. This morning she was wearing what one of the her honorary coaches deemed native bling. <laughs> yeah. Brown fighting inside. Well, you saw when Kalani Brown came off the court a couple of minutes ago, her head coach, and Kim Mulkey said to Holly Rose, she expects more out of Kalani Brown, a senior leader. Well, there's a little different fire for Kalani Brown right now over these last couple of minutes. Silenced a little bit as Arizona State answers back. Robbie Ryan getting her first points. Yeah. 
Landrum on the spin. Brown batted it out, and an Arizona State hand got in there, and it will be Baylor basketball. Are you disappointed the two head coaches aren't wearing those beautiful robes they were presented with during the game? It was very warm in this building, and I, I don't blame them here, but those look pretty nice. They Kara were, had her eyes on those. They were beautiful. I, I thought the robes that the, the head coaches were presented were, were beautiful and a, a wonderful token of, of respect by the Native American community. They're telling us this morning it's really a big deal to get that garment here. Smith determined to get it up. Looking for contact, didn't get the call, and here comes ASU. Ibis, Brown the rebound. Third rebound for Kalani Brown. Smith. Brown. Still fighting. Uh, just too much. Too much size and too much strength. I think Baylor's gotten into a nice rhythm here, understanding, hey, we're just going to put three post players on the floor. We're going to have a size advantage somewhere, and we're going to pound the offensive glass. Now we're starting to see what Baylor does well in this game. It's taken us to the middle of the third quarter. Kalani Brown into double figures now with 10. Eight coming since halftime. Brown inside position to bat it over to Juicy Landrum. Before the shot, Jackson was fouled. And that will, whistle will get us to a timeout with 4.55 to go in the third quarter. And this was part of the ceremony before the game. The two head coaches presented, honored with these robes here in Fort Defiance. Well, in the building here today, there are Native Americans who played college athletes, college basketball, like Renelli Vicente, but there are other ones like Kyrie Irving, mother of the Sioux Nation. Jacoby Ellsbury played for the Red Sox, won a World Series there, now with the Yankees. Joni Schimmel, that's someone that Charlie Turner Thorne talked about when she busted onto the scene with Louisville, the way she played. That's kind of the res ball way that they play here at Window Rock High School as you take a look at the Arizona State Hall of Famer, Renelli Vicente. With the other honorary captains, Rainey Crisp, Dr. Michelle Tom on the left, and Kayleen Carl, who is also in the Air Force. So we thank her for her service. As Kalani Brown's been a different player here since halftime, her coach wasn't too happy with what she was doing. Well, Baylor's clearly made an effort to get her the basketball in position in the post. I mean, look at how deep she is, two feet in the paint. There's nothing you can do with 6'7 when she catches this close. And she works so hard, is physically strong, and can finish inside. I've seen Kim Mulkey take her out a couple times and challenge her. You don't really realize how big Kalani Brown is until you're standing right next to her. And I, every time I have a chance to stand next to her, I'm just kind of surprised at how big and physically strong she is as you see Lauren Cox score inside as well but man she is just difficult to move Kara Holly Moore on Kalani well I can tell you why Kalani Brown is playing better in the second half because I have the distinct pleasure of being right here where Kim Mulkey is pacing up and down in front of me and I get to hear firsthand what she's saying to Kalani every single possession Kalani rebound like she is on her and she has not been happy with Kalani's intensity how she's played how she's gotten back and she is riding her star hard but I like it because Kalani has responded thank you for filtering that out Holly too by the way I'm sure that there's part of that too there's a three-pointer three-point shot had not been there since eight three-pointers were made in the first half but finally one for Arizona State to keep it an Arizona State lead up by four well we heard the displeasure in Kalani Brown's first half from Kim Mulkey in the halftime interview with Holly. Because when you go into an early season ranked game, you expect more from your upperclassmen. You expect more from your best players. They didn't get that from Kalani in the first half, but boy, they're getting it in the second half. Alyssa Smith, who just scored her first points of the second half, gets whistled 
for the foul. Now this was earlier in the game when one of the times where Kalani Brown came out and Kent Mulkey, you know, the standards are just different. Kalani Brown is on the short list for player of the year consideration nationally. If she has another double-double year like she did last year, 20 points, 10 rebounds, there's going to be people competing for that, but she has to bring it every single night, and she wasn't doing that in the first half. Catch and shoot, but short from Rudin. And now Brown getting tied up. Possession arrow will keep it on that end of the floor. And Kara, as you know, when you have a coach who can challenge you and you get in your face, the only thing you can possibly do is just go out there and quiet them by playing as hard as you can. And, you know, it doesn't matter. All right, the guards aren't getting you the ball. Well, too bad. Get bigger. Get stronger. Make it so that they have to be able to get you the ball. Going out of bounds by Rudin. Well, I'm sitting next to two players who played for two very demanding coaches. We know that through the years. Was that the, the greatest satisfaction that you weren't getting an earful from Coach Oriema or Coach Summit? <laughs> I don't know that there was ever a point that I wasn't getting an earful. <laughs> but I think the the kind of earful changed through the course of your through the course of your career. But career, but they're always going to challenge and find ways to to needle you. And certainly at, at the point guard position, that was true for me, playing for Pat. Kalani Brown was whistled for that foul. Cox is the one who was driving, and a player went down. But Brown is the one who got whistled for the foul. She's looking for an explanation. That's her third personal. Did you ever get to the point where it felt weird, though, if you weren't being not necessarily yelled at, but talked to? I don't think I ever got to the point where I was <laughs> getting yelled at or talked yeah. to. So I mean. I, I just liked it, I, you know, I, and I'm not going to say I like getting yelled at, but I liked the fact that I was being challenged. Yeah. So you just, you get to the point where you, you crave um, being challenged yeah, what do you got on a daily you? basis. Give me right, more. Give right, me more. right. Well, and you talk to players now too, and it's still the same, you know, coaches get on, you get on you and, and you get fired up and you want to prove them wrong. So you go out there and you play really well. And, it, and at one then at some point you realize, oh. I just did exactly what they wanted me to do. So yeah. they're going to continue to challenge to me and get it. on yeah. me. And then, of course, you know, you need to respond. After the foul on Brown, Riley Richardson whistled for a foul on the other end for Arizona State. Good fight by Cox for two. The largest lead of the game for Arizona State was 14. It came here in the second half, but Baylor has come back to tie it at 43. I love the way that Baylor's played. Uh, they're showing us something this afternoon because it was a really poor first half for them. They got, they got knocked. They got knocked around. They got punched in the face, so to speak. And they have battled back, and they have battled back in a way that's true to who they are. They haven't changed. And a lot of times when teams face adverse situations, you try to change who you are. You try to be something you're not. That's not what they've done. They've battled through that. And now it's Arizona State's turn to handle some adverse situations with some resiliency. And credit Kim Mulkey as well. You know, she started the second half with that bigger lineup went away a little bit from the wing pick and roll and has just planted her bigs inside, giving them, you know, gotten better position, giving them the basketball in a place where they could be more effective with it. Yeah, I thought a couple good set pieces for Kim Mulkey, that end out of bounds, that side out of bounds yep. early in the first half, got her big some quality looks. You saw the numbers, Baylor shooting 57% from the field in the second half. So out of the Arizona State timeout, tied at 43, 240 to go third quarter. Won't drop for Richardson. Jackson looks over to Kim Mulkey. Let's see what Baylor runs. D.D. Richards back into the game. Richards is fouled out top by Robbie Ryan. Well, I think Baylor was trying to run the high-low action with Cox to Brown. It was good denial by Arizona State of that pass to the top of the key and forced them to do something different. Johnson Chapman working hard, too, on Kalani Brown inside. Both teams in the bonus as Richards misses the free throw. Baylor has, up until this point of the season, been really bad from the free throw line. Less than 50% in their first two games. 
I'd do this too. I put four yellow jerseys on that line to try and box out too. <laughs> and, and you, but also four yellow jerseys and also just put the right timing on the curtain of distraction which made the trip here to Fort oh, Defiance as well. Wow. Well, those Arizona State traditions, they do travel. Inside of two to play, third quarter. Good little turnaround by Ibis. She's in the double figures now with 10. Arizona State back in front. Cox trying to track it down. Fighting her is Johnson Chapman. And we've seen a lot of fight from Cox and Kalani Brown especially. Jackson can't get it, and Richards called for the foul. Well, that's a solid defensive possession for Arizona State, and an excellent box out by Ryan. She's rewarded with the foul. I think Baylor was trying to, to ISO again, which we've seen a lot of in this second half for them. It's worked very well. Didn't have the proper spacing. So a couple of free throws coming up for Robbie Ryan, the junior from Sheridan, Wyoming. I'm a fan of the stool. <laughs> I know Kim Mulkey's a fan of it after she had the back surgery. Yes, yes. Spinal fusion surgery, so she's still trying to get to 100%. ESPN Basketball, a love story, our unprecedented 20-hour film that consists of more than 60 interconnected short stories, continues Tuesday with the final two episodes. It starts 8 o'clock Eastern time. All episodes also streaming live on the ESPN app. Ryan heads to the bench after making a couple of free throws. Jackson looking for Brown, Arizona State ready for it, but Brown tough to stop, just would not drop for it. Tough shot. Hanson, Cox the rebound. Tried to connect with Smith, a turnover for Baylor. So after taking care of the basketball in the opening minutes of this third quarter, a little sloppy for Baylor. And now a foul called on Baylor. Send Kiara Russell to the free throw line. Now, Kim Mulkey, she mentioned it to Holly. She knew this was going to be a tough challenge for Baylor. Arizona State beat Oregon State last year in the Pac-12 tourney. We all remember Oregon State beat Baylor in the NCAA tournament, ending their season. And they have had a very tough time of it with Arizona State. Kim Mulkey becoming a grandmother in the offseason. Congratulations to her family, her daughter Mackenzie. Baby boy in October. Cannon. Johnson Chapman the rebound. Arizona State wants the run, but now they'll slow it down with the shot clock off and they'll hold for a final shot. Mark trying to look over Cox on the run. Wild shot. And that will be it for the third quarter. Arizona State will take a lead to the fourth quarter, but Baylor area and they get big crowds, tournament time. That's how Charlie Turner Thorne first learned about Res Ball and how popular it is here. She was at Northern Arizona and went to a high school game recruiting. It's like, oh my gosh, look at all these people. They just love the basketball. And it kind of brings it all together, brings the people together on the reservation. I had a heated one-on-one -on -one battle with an 18-month-old <laughs> uh, before the game. So, Strong drive to the basket by Chloe Jackson to start the fourth quarter. Two-point game. You have to, uh, you owe him some rice and mashed banana, don't you, after <laughs> losing? Yeah. 
Arizona State tried to attack the inside. You see Landrum gets called for the offensive foul. So as Arizona State brings it up the court, we'll show you one more time. Yeah, I thought Juicy created that contact. And so I, I think it's a good call. I know Beller didn't like it, but a lot of times being a contact seeker in transition, it goes to your benefit as an offensive player. But I thought that was a little bit too much by Landrum. Good defense by Baylor, swarming the jump shooter Richardson. Cox. Good feed. No finish, though. Alenga broke through, just could not finish the job, and now back the other way. Big swing right there as Smith hits. Man, you got to finish that feed from your guard. It was a beautifully placed pass. And an open look, a rare open look for three. Hanson can't hit, and now again on the run, and again finishing is Smith. She's fearless. She is fearless in her ability to finish and get to the offensive glass, run in transition. And I enjoy watching her play. She's been their best player. I mean, in her first big game, she's been their best player, their most consistent player. She sprinted the court. She's been excellent. Arizona State's looking tired out there right now. They've really tried to use the bench. Three reserves ready to come in, but Baylor wearing them down, attacking the paint. And Cox will go to the free throw line. Points in the paint, 40 to 4 in favor of Baylor. They're in front for the first time since early in the game. Uh, she, she has been so consistent. And four straight points for Smith off of Arizona State missed opportunities. She's run the court hard and she's finished. I mean, she's already got a double-double, 16 and 10. She's 8 for 11 from the field. And not every shot that she's had has been easy. You know, th this lineup is going to be something I'm sure Kim Mulkey uses more over the future as we take a look at the curtain of distraction here in the two box. And Arizona State does this at their home games. Uh, and they do it in the direction when the opponent is shooting a second half free throws. And you never know what's going to pop out of the curtain of distraction. <laughs> that is not the 18-month-old that you no. beat in the game of one-on-one. -on -one the one the on the left maybe was that when it was over, <laughs> when the no, game no, I, was over. I thought you were the one crying, uh, not the 18-month-old. No. So Cox makes one of two, three-point lead. Brown bats it away. Four to shoot. Down to one. And a shot clock violation and a defensive stop for Baylor. And with how well Smith has played, Kara, I'm interested to see how much this big lineup becomes a part of the regular rotation for Kim Mulkey. Especially well, because she's athletic enough to defend out on the perimeter. She is. And, uh, you know, right now they've had more of Lauren Cox, Cox patrolling on the perimeter defensively. And she is somebody that, that has the length to be able to do that. So it's going to be dependent. It's always dependent on the big lineup is can you defend the right. smaller players defensively, right? You know you have the advantage on the offensive end, but... I think we'll see some of this from Baylor this season, maybe a lot, as you're just trying to get Smith minutes on the floor. Brown bats it out. Smith kept it alive. Open look. Landrum for three. First points for Juicy Landrum. Six-point Baylor lead. You're a Baylor opponent. You already have to worry about guarding. You're going to have a size mismatch. Most of their opponents are going to have a size mismatch, mismatch just with Brown and Cox. And now you throw in another 6-2 player on top of that. Cox fighting inside for two more. A 12-0 run for the Lady Bears. 
Strong drive to the basket, counted, and the foul. Chance for a three-point play for the freshman from Spain. Umbelito showing a little something. Arizona State desperately needed somebody to take control. And when the tie turns in a game, sometimes you have hesitancy. And when you're not shooting the ball well or you're going on a drought offensively, and I think we've seen a little bit of that from Arizona State. It's passing the ball, and it's it's looked like, hey, you make a play. And then someone's giving up, hey, oh, no, you, you go make a play. Th they were much more confident in the first half, and their movement is, isn't as good as it's been. Strong second half for Kalani Brown. She'll go to the bench, and Embolito can't hit the free throw. That's when you just want that player. It's like, okay, I'm going to go make the play. Yes. Brown and Smith sit down. Queen Egbo back into the game. D.D. Richards on the floor as well. Cox double comes, and she tried to find Lander, but threw it away. That's great timing on the double by Ekmark. Cox turns her back and surprises her, and a lot of times that can rattle a player, and Cox makes that off-target pass, so it was a nice play. It looked like an ad-lib by Ekmark. It was an excellent job. Courtney Ekmark had eight points in the first half. She has not scored in the second half as Baylor has extended the defense out to that three-point line, and Bolito well off the mark. Arizona State was 8 of 18 from outside the three-point line in the first half. They are 1 for 7 in the second half. And a foul called on Arizona State's Alenga. And you've got to give Egbo time to land on that. That was the, the problem is you've got to give her time to land and catch the ball. Or I should say space to land. Jackson to Cox. That won't stay down. Richards fights for it and somehow flips it in. D.D. Richards, first points of the second half. She has four. Eckmark rushed, challenged three-pointer off the mark, and Baylor getting a little separation. An offensive foul called on Richards. What a terrific run by Baylor in the second half. The only three-pointer of the game for the ba for the Bears. Juicy. take a look at what's happened in the first week of women's college basketball defending national champs Cruz they defeat Harvard in their opener Rico Gumbawale picking up where she left off with 30 points what a debut for Lindsey Whalen as head coach a sellout crowd at Minnesota as they take down UNH and UConn today took down Ohio State 19-7-5 for Katie Lou Samuelson here it's been a strong second half for Baylor they have outscored Arizona State 33-14 to take a 57 49 lead. Eric Freed, Carol Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe, and our ESPN crew here in Fort Defiance, Arizona. And this freshman from Converse, Texas, has been the big story for Baylor. 16 points for Alyssa Smith. She has been a true catalyst for this Baylor team. She's been fearless, played with a ton of energy, efficient inside. She's 8 of 11 from the floor. Johnson Chapman gets her first points. And Arizona State needed that bucket. Brings it back to a six-point game. Just over four to play. Jackson will head to the free throw line. That play has really worked well for Baylor. Getting the elbow entry and then the guard cutting off, slashing through the lane. Charlie Turner Thorne was talking to her team at shoot around this morning. You have to deny that pass into the elbow because it puts so much pressure on the guard as their players making that cut. Holly Rowe, have you made it to the curtain of distraction area? 
I have made it to the curtain of distraction, and I want to really give them a lot of credit. These kids drove six hours this morning to be here for their team. They have been loud and rowdy. They put this big pipe below the bus, the curtain. But look at this. This is the best part. There is an um, alien mask. There's a dino head. There's a shark head. There's a wig. There's all, and this is one tenth of their stuff. They have a whole room back at ASU. I'm really proud of the curtain of distraction. They're the best. Is she going to ignore the guy behind her in the wrestling singlet who is the, <laughs> the last member of the curtain of distraction? I would. <laughs> Probably a true professional, knows who to ignore. Approaching three and a half to go. Baylor's really dialed up the defense here in the second half. Arizona State shooting just 18% from the field, and a lot of the shots have been like that. Tough shots, off balance. It has not come easy for the Sun Devils here in the second half. Richards. Landrum has a big three in this game and a traveling violation. Turnover, Baylor. 15th turnover for Kim Mulkey's team. Much better job though in the second half. They had 21 against St. Francis in game number two. So there, there are things <laughs> Here for Baylor to work on, but you can work with this, what we've seen in the second half. Jackson will walk it up for Baylor. Inside of three minutes to play. Yeah, both teams, I, I think, are so far away from what they will be at the end of the year. A, a lot of potential because they're both depending on freshmen in their rotation heavily. And certainly Baylor's guard play will improve and they'll be able to maximize their strengths, which is the post. Timeout called by Arizona State. A lot of people like to pass judgment in November on what a team has for the entire year. This is development time, but I'd say Nalissa Smith is a quick learner <laughs> from what we've seen here so far this season. I mean, she has so, played so well early in the season, and Kara, you mentioned in their biggest test so far in Game 3, she was has been their best player. She's been out there. The emotion she's played with, the poise, the energy, she gets you extra buckets by getting to the offensive glass. She moves, she runs. And this is a 6-2 post player who's getting up and down the floor. and I just thought she had really good poise, especially in the first half when, when Baylor got down and was struggling to find offense. She provided it for them. Look at that, 8 of 11 from the floor, 11 boards. And she's really played well early in this season for Baylor. She's going to be a problem. She's going to be a problem for everybody in the Big 12. Back-to-back double-doubles for the freshman. Went for 21-10 and 10 against St. Francis. Got another double-double here tonight. Two minutes to go. Kalani Brown the rebound. Baylor's defense in this fourth quarter. It's just been at a high level. The way they have closed out, closed down Arizona State's offense. Taken away the three-point shot and limited them to one shot. What did Kim Mulkey tell Holly Rowe at the half? She said, we're talented, we're not poised. And in the second half, their poise has been much, much better on both ends of the floor. Sports Center tonight, 11 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. John Anderson, Keith Olbermann. They'll have post-game reaction from the Cowboys and Eagles. Highlights from the Veterans Day matchup between Army and Coach K's Duke Blue Devils. Coach K, a West Point alum, of course, as well as updates from Hawks Lakers, Sports Center 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. It'll be Arizona State basketball. Well, if you're Arizona State, you look up at the scoreboard, you've held Baylor to 59 points. And as you mentioned, there's a lot of youth on this Arizona State team. Some players still trying to find their rhythm find full fitness as Ibis knocks down the three. She has 13. 
But they've done some pretty good things here today, especially in the first half. A nice set play by Charlie Turner Thorne to get her team, to give her team some life. It's only a two possession game. Fifty nine. 54. Jackson, too strong, but there is Kalani Brown. Inside of a minute to go, and Ekmark was fouled attempting a three pointer. I think they're going to go to the monitor just to make sure. So, yes, they have already made their way over to the monitor for review here to see if this will be three free throws or two for Courtney Eckmark, who has been taken out of the ASU offense here in the second half by Baylor, has not scored in the second half. Well, she had one three-pointer. It was ended up being a two-pointer. She had her foot on the line in the first half. Right. And then she had another that she missed where she had her foot on the line. So on her step back, uh, she's behind it there. But a couple times on her step back, she has still had that toe on the three-point line. So it's good to check. And remember, in, in women's college basketball, you can advance. So as we look at this big picture with Arizona State down three possessions right now with the player getting ready to go to the, to the free throw line. Uh, and what did we talk about with Baylor and where they struggle? Free throw line. At the free throw line. Okay. So this game far from over. Mm -hmm. Um, and if, if Ekmark's able to uh, able to knock down these these three free throws, now all of a sudden you can play the long game a little bit if you're Charlie Turner Thorne, and you can foul and see if they'll give you some possessions, some empty possessions with one or two missed free throws. Officials taking a long look here. It seemed pretty clear cut that Ekmark had stepped by for a three, and I've been told they had a little technical problem getting the right replay. They weren't seeing exactly what we saw at first, but taking the time to make sure they can get that look and it will be three free throws for Ekmark last year she was a 77% free throw shooter graduate student from Arcadia, Arizona, second year with Arizona State after transferring over from UConn, member of two title teams and stores. Law school student. So she's got a full plate. Law school, basketball practice. This is the first. In her second year law school. Sandra Day O'Connor, school of law. First point of the second half for Ekmark. Substitutions for Arizona State as Kara Russell comes in. Johnson Chapman in as well. I would anticipate a timeout from Kim Mulkey to advance if Baylor. Yeah, right here. There is the timeout, and they will advance the basketball into the front court. Final minute of play here in the fourth quarter. Five-point game. So this is a challenging game here in game three for Baylor, taking on nationally ranked Arizona State on the road. Not the only challenge on the schedule for Kim Mulkey's squad in the non-conference. Look at it in the month of December. South Carolina on the road. Stanford on the road. A couple of top ten teams right there. And then that UConn game right after the new year. Can't wait for that one. We'll be down in, in Waco for that. And, uh, you know, you, you look at going on the road and I think it's good for Kim Mulkey to challenge her team well, it's good for any coach to challenge their team in the non-conference but in particular because she has a, a young team it's good to see and and she'll figure out her rotation and who she can trust and who has the ability to elevate their game we know one player in Alyssa Smith has the ability to, to elevate her game and in, in the early going well if they don't get a steal they go for a quick foul and Kalani Brown just going to take the lane to the basket and score. Baylor in attack mode in the half court. Ekmark, deep three. Rebound by Jackson. And Jackson is fouled. Smart play by Kalani Brown to just attack. And if you're going to go for broke defensively, you better get the steal or the foul in those situations.
Chloe Jackson makes the first. Taya Hansen back in for Arizona State. Jamie Rudin checks back in as well. Get some three-point shooters on the floor for Arizona State. Free throws, no problem for Chloe Jackson as she makes a couple. And a timeout called with 31.8 to go here in the fourth quarter. So Arizona State was up by 14 in the second half. Baylor, number four team in the country. First real big test of the year, passed it in that second half. Impressive performance. Um, you know, we talked about the start. There's going to be a basketball game played here today, and it, it's going to mean something because it's a ranked matchup. But I have loved every second that we've been on this reservation. <laughs> the passion of the people, uh, how much they love the game, the people lined up to get in, uh, how excited they are, and thanking us for coming. And we're, th we're in turn thanking them because it's been such a great experience. And you see all the young people here, and it's, it's such a passion for the elders in this community to expose the young people of this nation to what they can be in being a Division I athlete and being a strong woman and being somebody that can, can inspire and make a difference. And so it's been inspiring for me as we've honored these veterans and we've been here with Navajo Nation. I want to say thank you to Navajo Nation and thank you to our veterans all around the country, all around the world on this day as, as we celebrate them. And how fortunate we are to get a chance to come out here because if not for this game, we would not have been, at, would, would not, uh, have been here. And unbelievably how welcoming this community has been to us. And gotten to see a pretty great basketball game. Too. I got nervous that you guys weren't going to get here for the opening tip because you could not make it one or two feet without being mobbed by the folks here. Huge hoop fans, huge Kara and Rebecca and Holly fans as well. That was fun to watch too. I think there was one Eric fan. I think <laughs> yeah. I saw one. <laughs> was it you or Kara? I'm going with Kara right about now. Uh, Holly actually. <laughs> I can always count on Holly. Well, someone had to hold down the fort here while you guys were with the paparazzi. Ekmark, deep three. Courtney Ekmark delivers the three-pointer. Arizona State not giving up just yet. Shot clock is off, and here's Juicy Landrum. Time continues to tick away. Going to have to give a foul. Jackson playing keep away. Ten seconds to go. And now looking over to the bench, Charlie Turner Thorne says, do not foul, and that will do it. Great event here on the Navajo Reservation. These two coaches embracing.